What's up, wig splitters? Eight week challenge time. Starting January 1st to February 26th, we're gonna reward the best transformations. Man or woman, you're gonna get rewarded. Five G's first place, second place 1500. Then we're gonna do five runner ups for some yard time. Go to wigsplitterworkout.com for all the details. Let's get in the best shape of your life and go split some wigs. What's up everybody? Big Hurt, getting down with Fresh Out, and you tuned in to another interview. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, you don't wanna miss out. We got some dope stuff coming up for you. And I have with me here, Ismail Soto, and he's got a hell of a story to tell, and uh, I'm gonna let him kinda start off with how he grew up and where he's from. I'm from Diego, San Diego. Um, I was actually born in the Bay Area and uh, moved to San Diego at a young age. Started getting knuckleheadish around 14, 15, um, ripping and running. And uh, when I turned 21, caught me a DUI and uh, was on probation for 10 years. Damn, yeah. 10 year probation? I never, uh, I never checked in. I, yeah. I, I never checked in, I'd just leave, left the state, ran around, come back, they'd violate me, reinstate, and it kept, you know, multiplying over and over and over. Oh, we'll redo you three more years. So I had a joint suspended sentence for three or for nine years, nine and a half years. Mm -hmm. Ended up catching my case. Um, my charge was perjury. I wouldn't tell on somebody. On the stand, I lied. Mm -hmm. And after I lied on the stand, they said, you violate probation. You're going to get this joint suspended sentence three years, eight months. For a DUI. I didn't know what I was doing at a young age. I just signed the form, right? I said, let me go home. Fine, I got joint suspended sentence. Misdemeanor probation, but you violate four times back in the day. It used to become felony probation. Mm -hmm. There used mm -hmm. to be a hold. You couldn't <clears throat> bail out on probation hold. So, long story short, I ended up not telling on somebody lied on the stand. They were very close to me. And I, I, I was fighting this case. They, they kept trying to get me to come in there and testify. And I'm, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. They started following me around. Right? San Diego district attorney, mm. the investigators started following me to Vons, following me to my house, following, pulling me over. Well, it got to the point where they were like, Hey, you're going to do this time. If you don't tell, you know, this is what's going to happen basically you're gonna three you. years. If you don't tell, I've never been to jail, been to jail overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not ready for this So, I'm, but I'm not telling, right. That's instilled in me. So I turn around and uh, I take off. I'm like, yeah, you got to catch me. Well, they end up charging me with a smorgasbord of charges, like 68 charges, felonies, mm. when they found me. Mm. I was on the run for 15 months, uh, ran all over the place. Phoenix, uh, LA, Orange County, San Francisco, Pennsylvania, I'm all over the place. They can't catch me. And when they do catch me, they find me with a whole bunch of receipts. They turn around and charge me in each one of those jurisdictions. Mm. So I ended up getting caught, going to George Bailey to the Thunderdorm, handling business. And then when I did get sentenced to prison, they shipped me right back out to Orange County. Mm -hmm. Then the marshals came and got me. They took me to the tent city in Arizona and Phoenix, Maricopa County. Then they took me back out. They took me to Monterey County, beat that case, come back to reception all over again. I ended up going to um, Donovan was my reception center. It was, all, it was still good then. It's all bad now. Uh, Donovan, Chino, that's a terrible place, and Jamestown. So how much time did you do all together in California? 42 months okay. on, on a, on a five-year term. When they caught me, they gave me 60 months. Okay. I was supposed to do three years, eight months. Mm. So during that time, once you they brought you back here and they kind of like made you start doing your time here, 
what were some of the things you did while you were in to prepare yourself so you, when you got out, you didn't have to, you know, worry about being an ex-felon? Well, I knew involved. from talking to a lot of the OGs in there, um, I rode other, right? Mm -hmm. So a little bit more quiet of a car, um, really takes care of each other, and, and you get to chop it up with almost every race. They're mm -hmm. cool with you. So there's really not not some crazy block off where you can't talk to that white dude or whatever. They're cool with mm -hmm. the others. Um, and I wasn't on some crazy high power yard all the time. I was on a few of them, but I chopped it up with a lot of older people that gave me insight. I mean, I saw dudes in there watching Shark Tank. So I just spent my time reading, researching, and, and thinking of a plan to come out and capitalize on the shortcomings that I just went through. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I was on the run, I was toying with these bounty hunters, right? I've always been real good on a computer, vicious. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up, I said, you know what? I'm going to put something together. These dudes can't find me. I wonder if I can take over this industry. This is crazy. I'm just, <laughs> you know? This, yeah. So I, I decided I was going to put together a forensic software that could track people. Mm -hmm. and, and I did it. And this is what you planned while you were inside. I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, I planned this while I was inside. I have notes where I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got out, I, I, wouldn't, I wanted to sell this software, but I, I was planning the whole time. When I got out, a very close individual to my family, actually in my immediate family, was, was molested by a family member. And instead of you know, going and, and sending my butt back to prison, which I knew would happen if I retaliated the way I wanted to, I channeled that anger and I, I put together this crew, and we decided we were going to come become bounty hunters and hunt sex offenders. Now, how were you able to become a bounty hunter as an ex-felon, and you couldn't carry a firearm? I didn't carry a firearm. And but you were still able to go out and I bring somebody with me who was licensed to carry a firearm. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you were similar, to, like the dog, the bounty hunter type situation, or more. I know him. He's he's still the same way. Okay. I mean, he's he doesn't believe in weapons like that. Okay. But he has people around him, i.e., his son or okay. you know another cast member. Yeah. They're definitely armed. I mean, he's dealing with the realest of the real. So how long after you got out did you get into the whole bounty hunter thing? It took me uh, 13 months. So I got out in 2012 and I started um, 2014. And like predominantly, you said like you said. Uh, they were all sex fans. All sex fans. And how many, like, what were the numbers? Because you, you told me off camera, but I think I thought it was pretty so, astronomical. So my team, we were, they call us the Doom Squad. We were responsible for 4,314 arrests before I quit. Right, and I quit last year. 4,314 arrests, all sex offenders. Not only from the state of California. We went to Mexico. Wow. We've been, I mean, Ber P Belize, uh, Peru, Bolivia, Mexico, um, Every state, we've been all over. And like the backgrounds, there's people from every walk of life or? I will tell you that the predominantly, that, w that we were tasting, Hispanic. I, I don't know if that's due to the vicinity of where yeah. we live and proximity to the border. We're in Southern California, you know, mm -hmm. but mostly Hispanic and, and white that would run. Wow. And, uh, you know, we, we always talk about you know, we don't we don't really deal with those people and people. You know, I really don't want nothing to do with them. But how they how are they looked at in prison? Are they, these people are they pretty despised even by the law enforcement or are they just? <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen a, a CO let us know right because in in the the others in the blacks we roll congruently right okay. not not all the time together it depends on the yard you're on mm -hmm. but I've seen them let us know let the others know look that dude's all bad. Mm. I've seen a CO. So, yeah, I believe there's an actual disdain from every walk of life for somebody who's a sex <clears> offender. <throat> yeah, because I know we were talking with uh, Ron and Strong, and he was saying, like, in Mexico, dude, they find out up in there, it's, it's, you're done. So when you, you get up in there? We've been in Mexico. We have chased sex offenders, and you had better catch them before the them people down there catch them because they'll eliminate them. And so there's no, yeah, you get no pass. No, they'll kill them before we can catch them and bring them back and make our money. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how they're getting down out there with them, huh? Yeah, they're not joking. Wow. Not joking. So having, having established that business, I mean, did you go on to like sell your software? Can you say you came up with the whole forensic tracking thing? What, mm -hmm. what, what happened with that? I decided not to sell it. I've lightweight, I mean, I didn't want to put, I've never really believed fully in parts of the justice system, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they've done me wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at myself now. 
I did almost five years in prison for lying, for not telling, for doing what your mama told you to do. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and I'm looking at other people now who are committing crazy crimes, and they're not even going to jail. Who am I to tell somebody they got to go to jail? I don't want to catch you and put you away. But a sex offender is a different story. Yeah. For me, this hit home personally, and <clears throat> it made us want to, I mean, I built out my third car garage into a full-blown office. We were hunting sex offenders 24-7. You know, That's some crazy. days 18... 18 hours I'm working and I got another guy that gets on for eight hours. Literally, that's how many there are. And the thing is, you know, you don't really, I mean, here and there you'll hear little things about like uh, human trafficking or different things. But you don't really hear people talking about this. It's like they don't want people to know. You know it's, what I mean? It's bad publicity. But every state, every county, every jurisdiction has issues with human trafficking. And it starts at a small level. It's, it's equivalent to the way that the media would not represent or, or report on every single dog bite, but they only talk about the pit bull dog bite. Exactly, exactly, and exactly. And that's, that's the, alleg the allegorical way I can put it. But for the most part, sex offenses, sex trafficking, sex offenders, you wouldn't imagine how many people are, are wild running in the streets right now that need to be registered as sex offenders and haven't. They've mm. been convicted. They've been told you have this amount of time there's not enough cops out to enforce, literally. So that's why you kind of see now when these people pop up on the news, this guy was at uh, coaching a YMCA or this guy is... A, yeah, he, they the, slid through. Yeah, they slid through. Basically, these guys are already pieces of shit. Pieces of shit, yeah, that's correct. Wow. And, and they're alive and, and around us and well, and that's the crazy part. So I run everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm a private investigator to this day. Mm -hmm. I'm now out of the bail industry. That, that's something I want to get to in a couple of minutes. But the bail industry enabled me to see, I mean, the bail industry is the dirtiest industry. You have, it's worse than the street, Hurt. Mm. You've never seen anything like this. There's more honor amongst thieves. I'd rather deal with criminals than bail agents. Wow. Literally, on a daily basis. And they will steal. They will rob. They will lie. They will cheat. I mean, everything that will get you stomped out in the pen, they're doing right now. So they basically got a license just to rob and do whatever they want to do. Correct. It, it's a license to steal. And I say that. Another thing I think about is what kind of individual are you to bail somebody out of jail? Like, yeah, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. But why would you bail somebody out of jail that you know just touched some little girl, 37 counts? You know, we brought back a dude. His name's Fernando Maldonado. Uh, wanted out of the Bay Area last year. Um, the link will be at the bottom of this video, and I'm telling you, this dude, you raped a little girl, child rape, 37 times? Yes, that's... They yeah. gave him 37 years, though. We brought him back all the way from Mexico City.